invitaciones extranjeras. No queremos extranjeros, aquí lo que queremos es trabajar, queremos ser competitivos, pero con esta empresa extranjera no se puede. All of these cab drivers are protesting because the Uber drivers in Mexico City are now taking their business. And so they're protesting in this square. And to the right is where the Fashion Week is happening. And everybody's arrived here in an Uber. <laughs> so it's a pretty intense vibe right now. All the riot police are out. And there's just girls over there, like in their outfits, smoking cigs, having the time. I love this place. This is truly, deeply one of my favorite cities in the world, mostly for the food. Mexico City and its sprawl is the largest urban area in the entire Western Hemisphere. It has a population of over 20 million people, and it's only getting bigger as more people migrate. And while people come to the city seeking opportunity, the astronomical wealth gap of the country still prevails. On one hand, Mexico is home to some of the richest people in the world, people like billionaire Carlos Slim. And at the same time, its poverty rate is devastating. Almost 60% of the country is considered lower class, while the upper class is a minuscule 1.7%. I am here to go to Fashion Week, which is sort of the hub of elitism and really sort of the center of Mexico's 1%. So I think we'll really get an idea of this extreme wealth disparity that's existing right now and it seems to only be getting worse. I'm on my way to the 10th annual Mercedes-Benz Fashion Week, which showcases majority Mexican designers. Yeah, everybody's got strong looks here. It's very fashion. Feels like a pretty standard fashion week. There's a lot of hubbub though, and it seems like people are being really like serious about who gets in and who doesn't. One of the most anticipated shows is Benito Santos. Benito Santos designs are popular among the elite. His clients include famous Mexican actresses and singers. He even dresses the president's wife, the former telenovela star Angelica Rivera, as well as her daughters. Hi, I'm Haley. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much for having me. What's going on in Mexican fashion right now? What's so unique about it? There's a lot of talent in Mexico. I see a lot of talent. It's very diverse. And that's what's enriching the mode in Mexico. I think that in the extranjero, you have to look at Mexico and discover everything that there is in our country. You designed for the president's wife. Yes. That's a big responsibility. That's a big responsibility. You know, it is that weird thing where I'm like, where am I? It doesn't feel like distinctly Mexican in any way. I'm not exactly sure like what my idea of Mexico is, but I don't think it's this. Muchas gracias. Salud. Salud. Fashion Weeks all around the world strive to be on par with the big four, New York, Paris, Milan, and London. And this one certainly stacks up. But in Mexico City, some of the strongest looks are in unlikely places. There is a group mentality that permeates this city. There are the punks, the emos, the metaleros, the pachucos, the rockabillies, and the darketos. Even the wealthy telegraph who they are by what they wear. 
And whether they like it or not, their tribe has also been given a name, Murray. Can you translate Murray? I think it's douchebag. <laughs> douchebag with Douche bells bag. behind it. Yeah. But Murray means king? Or yeah, my king. My king. My king. Okay. Sergio started a blog called Murray Book so he could do something in Mexico that people don't often dare to do, make fun of the rich kids. It became a sensation. First, you could see the upper, upper class in Mexico appearing there. Mm -hmm. We were just putting captions there yeah. and making jokes of them. And you could see the debate in the comments. People could say, that one is not Amirrey, that one is Amirrey, because of what he's wearing or because he's with a sh champagne and a yeah. yacht. But then we realized that people didn't see the satire because it became a viral phenomenon and people wanted to appear like Amir Rey and just send the pictures there. There are people that only represent this lifestyle. They can spend a thousand pesos in a bottle, but they don't do that on a regular basis. Okay. So there is something about representing and that's very Mexican, I think. People prefer to appear than to actually be. It's no wonder that people are trying to appear like they are rich. Because if you're rich in Mexico City, you can apparently get away with anything. There have been viral videos circulating of the wealthy, like a group of ladies yelling at a cop for pulling them over. Or a drunk driver screaming that his father is the president. Citizens have become a vigilante force by capturing videos of the rich acting out and broadcasting them to the world. They have affectionately dubbed the subjects of their videos, lords and ladies. This is Ari. He captured a video of a man now infamously known as Lord Audi. He put it on YouTube and it got four million views. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm Hi. Haley. Hi, Haley. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. <laughs> Woo. Okay, so can you just start by detailing to me what happened this summer with Lord Audi? Bueno, iba de regreso a casa, de trabajo. Este personaje me empezó a golpear en la parte de atrás de la bici. ¿Cuál es tu problema? De la bici desde hace rato, desde allá atrás. Y aceleró hasta golpearme de una manera más fuerte. Vienes en un carril exclusivo, hermano. So were you surprised by the way that that kid reacted? Este tipo de gente pues está educada en en una vida así, sin consecuencias, que todo lo solucionan con dinero o influencia. Entonces para él se le hizo lo más normal. Have any of the lords and ladies come out and apologized for their behavior? Mm, que yo sepa, no. Y es lo que te comentaba, no es su realidad, es yeah. el mundo en el que ellos viven, yeah. donde lo que hicieron no está mal. The way the, w the police works is really through corruption. That yeah. means that's their main entrance of money. Right, no? right. So there's this uh, social class that they do have impunity and they can do anything they want. When you read about history, you could have castes, no? If you were indigenous, or if you were white, or if you were Spaniard and Mexicans. During the colonial period, when Mexico was under Spanish rule, the government imposed a legal caste system that broke down class according to race. They even commissioned official paintings to help clarify how each group fit into an overall social structure. There were 16 categories broken down by a person's percentage of European, Native Indian, and African lineage. Essentially, the darker you were, the lower you fell on the social ladder. When Mexico became independent from Spain in 1821, the caste system was abolished. Later, the government pushed a united identity, mestizo, meaning of mixed Spanish and indigenous descent. They teach you this in school, and they would say this was the way Mexico worked. And you know what, now, now we are all mestizos. And it's like, really? Why should I feel like that? Because yeah. I don't feel like that. So I guess that you decide like, to, to belong to something else. This society was built around a legal social structure that in theory was abolished. However, the echo of these class divisions still remains. 
Nowadays, the people of Mexico City seem to have created an alternative social structure through urban tribes. I'm here to find out why belonging is so important in Mexico City. There's a fashion week happening. Is this something that you would ever consider participating in? No, Rip no tiene nada que ver con el mundo fashion y yeah, yeah, la yeah. moda. Pues me parece muy lindo lo que hacen, pero pues yo no tengo... No es mi interés. Lara Fuentes, a.k.a. Rosa Pistola, is one of the main female DJs in the reggaeton scene. She owns a store here where she makes streetwear. So this is where you make everything? Sí, aquí es donde hacemos todo lo de la marca de la tienda. Bueno, esta es nuestra máquina más importante, eh, que imprime algodón. And do you do this all yourself? Sí, todos lo hacemos. Eh, bueno, pues nuestra, ahorita tenemos nuestra colección de infierno, que es algo que llevamos trabajando varios meses. Uh -huh. Y es todo basado en, como en estos demonios. Entonces, pues sacamos estas líneas de pants, de crewnecks, hoodies, shorts, crops para mujer. Yeah, you ready? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have my turtle on. It's so like really dorky. Like that? And some chains. Chains, and okay. Like big earrings. Big earrings, okay. So how should I act when I go to the show? Uh, well, cuando llegues, uh, chequear muy bien a los chicos para que sepas elegir bien con cuáles, con quién vas a perrear. <laughs> You are a massive figure in the reggaeton scene. I was wondering if you could describe sort of what a reggaetonero is. Era como la música que expresaba todas esas cosas que estaban pasando en la sociedad de las que el gobierno no quería hablar y no quería que se enterara nadie. Y bueno, yo le digo que es música de barrio, entonces pues está muy relacionada a todas las actividades que pasan en el barrio, ¿no? Yo vengo de barrio y me siento muy relacionada con todo ese tipo de vivencias. Nada más me hace sentir orgullo y de que no tengo que esconder lo que soy ni de dónde vengo. We're going to a party where DJ Crisis, one of Rose's crew, is playing a show. I'm in Neza. It's late at night. We are really far from the center of the city. We're about an hour and a half away. El reggaeton ha atizado pues ahora este escenarios grandes. Eh, tocan reggaeton en el radio. El reggaeton ya está en todos los clubs. There's something about it being overtly sexual that is upsetting to a extremely Catholic country. Pues en realidad, este, yo creo que aquí que en México ya no son tan tan reservados. Al principio sí, este, cuando veían escenas de de gente bailando, sí como que ah, después, este, pues ya dejaron como que de verlo tan mal. Y en realidad más lo que veían mal era que que andaba como que toda la gente se, se hacían como combos porque los asociaban mucho con el reggaeton. The combos are gangs of reggaetoneros who wreak havoc on the subways. They are indicative of this Mexico City trend towards urban tribalism, where people form groups based on the music they listen to or the neighborhood that they're from. The peso is sort of at an all-time low. Do you feel like there's a certain energy in the country right now? Sí, es muy difícil en realidad porque para comprar cosas, hasta para comprar, comprar lo, que, lo que sea, este, ahora es más caro y yo en realidad sigo ganando lo mismo. <ríe> yo creo que a todos los mexicanos nos está afectando. En el centro es una casa mucho más cara, cuatro veces el precio. Tienes que comprar una casa económica y las casas económicas están a las afueras, en las, en las orillas donde empiezan a ser en las nuevas colonias. Neza is one of these settlements. With a wave of urban migration, people set up their homes on drained swampland. 
For years, the government ignored these settlers and didn't bring in electricity, water, or sewage. Now, Neza has resources, but violence and gangs still plague the streets. These are the Cholos. Originally, the term Cholos described Mexicans who moved to the United States and tend to be associated with gangs. But many of them have been deported by the U.S. and have moved back to Neza. Hola, Haley, how are you? Fine. Are you from California? Yeah, 17 years ago, I went to California. And then you came back? Deportado. <laughs> We're all wearing the same sneakers, Cortez. <laughs> okay, so can somebody break down like the cholo outfit for me? Pero la mayoría de ropa, bueno, el estilo de los cholos viene más que nada de de la gente que está que estaba en las prisiones, ¿no? De las prisiones, de los campesinos, de la gente que trabajaba en las en las cocinas, incluso antes los cholos eran con pelo, entonces todo eso viene de ese de esos tiempos, ¿no? Es lo que representa el cholo, el mexicano. Es lo que venimos representando todos, ¿no? A los mexicanos. Más que nada, ese, ese es el motivo de la ropa. What's the difference between Mexican cholos and cholos from LA? La diferencia es en cuestión económica, ¿no? Porque en Estados Unidos pues, hay más, está, es mejor la economía, ¿no? Tien, tienen la forma de cómo conseguir dinero. Incluso yo por ahí escuché que en Estados Unidos, cuando te quedas sin trabajo, Estados Unidos te eh, da una feria para que te alivianes mientras no tienes trabajo. Y aquí en México, cosa que no pasa, ¿no? Tú no tienes trabajo, te mueres de hambre y esto, bro, ¿no? Por eso es que hay tanta delincuencia aquí en México, porque... No hay esa, esa feria para poder armarte una bike, un carro, porque tienes esa necesidad y por esa necesidad sales a hacer pandillero, ¿no? Uh -huh. Te late de delinquir. And talk to me about Neza. Is this a rough neighborhood? Tú la ves así tranquila ahorita, en la noche no puedes caminar aquí tú sola. Do you guys have guns? No, ya no. Yo creo que ya con la apariencia tenemos. You don't need a gun because you're scary enough like that to people? Sí, desgraciadamente. Sí. Esas... Se conoce porque en esa es violencia, porque en esa es pandilla, porque en esa, en esa matan y cae balazos y todo eso. Pero la verdad, si nos vamos a ver, en esa es, también cuenta con mucha gente eh, trabajadora. Se, se ayuda más entre las gentes de, de calle uh -huh. que con el mismo gobierno. El gobierno siempre te, te quiere ver abajo. If you were in Cholo, what would you be? Si no fueran cholos, ¿qué serían? Cholos. 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 Saturday morning, and on Saturday morning, punks come and get their hair done before they go to a punk show on Saturday night. So I'm coming here to get my hair done before I go out. Hola. Hola, ¿cómo estás? ¿Qué tal? Muy bien, ¿y tú? Como que te voy a hacer lo que yo quiera. Uh-huh. Pásate. Okay, I'm going to a malaria park show tonight. ¿Me vas a invitar? Yeah. Sí, más te vale, porque si no, uy, te corto la cabeza. I'm in Mexico City getting my hair done for a punk show tonight. So this is your book. Which one's your favorite? That one. Okay, that's what I'm getting. How long have you been a punk? En el punk llevo toda mi vida. Pues hace como de los setentas. Ellos también son mis compañeros de... Hola. Una amiga. Una amiga, ¿pueden saludar? No muerde, no muerde. Do you have kids? No. Just these guys? Sí, los niños vienen unos de Toluca, vienen de Veracruz, vienen de Puebla y de Chiapas. Many punks in Mexico City commute from rural neighborhoods to work construction jobs in the city. And on the weekends, they transform into this. Nos cuidamos mutuamente todos. What yeah. do they talk to you about? De su trabajo, de sus novias, de que no les pagaron, de que tienen problemas en su casa. Have you ever made spikes this long? Una vez me tocó uno más largo, ya metro y medio. It's like a limp dick. Did 
Does the number of spikes mean anything? Los siete días de la semana que somos punks, ¿sale? O igual son los siete pecados capitales. Va en creencias. Cuando es una cresta y un pico, sí, es el bien y el mal. La cresta es el bien y los picos es el mal. Los colores es la agresividad que tienes tú en tu mente, ¿sale? Tu, tu vestimenta es tu, tu identidad privada. Out of the corner of my eye, I spot some emos. Someone told me I would not be able to find any more emos because they had all been like bullied so hard or beaten the shit out of that they stopped dressing this way. So this is like a unicorn sighting for me, <laughs> even though I look more like a unicorn than he does. Hola, I'm Haley. What's your name? Jose. Jose. How long have you been an emo? Uh, desde los tres años. Y yo, este. Antes me discriminaban y así me hacían bullying. Y ya desde ese tiempo, este, pues, o sea, me llamé la atención sobre los emos. And what were, what were they discriminating? Pues entonces era así como que, no sé, pues, o sea, no era gay ni nada de eso, pero pues, o sea, pensaba en ellos para que yo para mí era así. I heard that there was a lot of backlash against emos. Toda la gente les da odio al emo. O sea, les da odio porque nosotros tomamos su, este... Así, pues, nacemos del hardcore y, este, y ya, o sea, como que ellos les da coraje de que nosotros nacimos. Pues eso, a mí sí me gusta salir como voy yo, pero pues... Pero pues yo vengo representando todo y, este... Pero a la vez sí te queda viendo medio mal la gente y pues es la, lo que a mí no me gusta. What do you think about my hair? Uh, pues que representa ser punk, ¿no? Yeah, but it looks like dildos. Que te hubieran hecho otro más padre. Yeah, it's not very pretty. Thanks so much. Do emos hug? Oh, emos kiss. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys. They're all sniffing glue right now. zombie apocalypse, but back here is completely different. These women just gave me this shawl to keep me warm and gave us coffee, and there is like a real sense of community within all of this chaos. Ese hombre que se le pasaron las copas, cualquier es obligado a ayudarle, y todos ayudan a cargarlo. Entonces eso, eso es una What's it like when you're like with all of your friends? Nos sentimos bien valientes. Are there like people against you that you need like a crew for? Sí. Como los cholos, los los arquetos, los hemos. Hay problemas con otras, pues con otras razas. Jose, the emo that I met yesterday at the hair salon, told me that the emos were gathering in this square today to protest a hate crime that happened in 2008, um, where essentially they had the shit beaten out of them. It happened in the city of Queretaro. Hundreds of people went on a violent rampage, beating up emos and filming it on their cell phones. The next week, more emos were attacked in Mexico City. 
It prompted media attention, but no proper justice was ever served. Mexico is a deeply Catholic country, and discrimination against homosexuality is still common. Unfortunately, emos are often the target of this anti-gay sentiment. Can you see me right now? <laughs> it seems like some people in Mexico sort of misinterpret emo as having kind of like homosexual leanings. Is that why you think that you're targeted so much? When I recién llegó el emo a Mexico, muchas personas lo utilizaban para ocultar homosexualidades. Uh -huh. Ahí fue cuando fue aún más mal catalogado por la sociedad. Mm -hmm. O sea, por decir, veían un ejemplo a mí, a cualquier persona de este estilo lo, lo, lo tenían mal catalogado por ser, tener otra orientación sexual. ¿Qué do your parents think about you guys being emos? Uh, me, me escapé de mi casa. Uh, mis papás odiaban esto, odiaban esto y uh -huh. estaban que yo fuera así. De hecho, ellos querían que me vistiera como una persona normal y decente. ¿Y qué do guys think about punks? Son muy, muy agresivos yeah. y detestan todo lo que no se parece a ellos. Sí, cuando recién inicié el evento, varios punketos igual publicaban en mi evento que iban a venir y nos iban a linchar, pero ahora sí que por cualquier problema, uh -huh. que, por es que entre todos como familia vamos a responder. Uh -huh. You were doing like a screamo voice before? Soy familia de un emoción. Do you suck in air? Inhale. My families are emos. <laughs> It's really hard. Vamos a pasar por Genova. Vamos a tapar el acceso. 20 minutos para que se acuerden que los amos seguimos vivos. Just a few blocks from here, there is a cluster of office buildings where an unlikely subculture is emerging, the Godinas. Trato de no tener muchas cosas, no hay cosas pegadas. Únicamente lo que necesito, eh, en mi oficina tengo un jardín zen para un momento de relajación. This is Jonathan, and he is a Godinas. The legend of Godinas says they are nine to fivers who work in cubicles. Muchas eh, memorias USB. Wear suits and office badges. Una corbata. Dos corbata. Tres corbata. Cuatro corbata. Throw birthday parties for their coworkers. And bring their lunch to work every day. The moniker of Godinas was used by the upper class to degrade the middle class office worker. <laughs> It's the wee hours of the morning here in Mexico City, and I am here to meet Jonathan. Hola. Hola. Talk me through your morning ritual. En la mañana me levanto y cocino pollo, eh, arroz, mm -hmm. y lo preparo para llevármelo en, en el Tupperware. There's an amazing setup here. Sí. Eh, todos los fines de semana compro el pollo, so you eat all of this today? Sí. Wow. Lo divido en cuatro, en cinco comidas. Oh, I see, I see. What are the biggest um, stereotypes of Godinas? Que solo esperan la quincena para cobrar. Son gente sin educación. Otro estigma es que salen en punto de la hora de salida. No se espera ni un minuto más que utilizamos el Tupperware. You have a lot, though. Sí. <laughs> Super godín. Gracias. All right. <laughs> Seems like the Godinas thing was like upper class people making fun of this like new sort of middle class that was coming up. Sí, el, el término de Godínez tiene una carga de clasismo muy fuerte. Uh -huh. Entonces, si yo no estuviera contento ser Godínez, yo creo que no estaría logrando nada. Godínez, pound. Yo creo que no tiene caso 
tratar de aparentar algo que no eres. Ya vamos a pasar por mi amigo. Okay. Hola. Alberto. Hola. How are you? Muy bien. Un poco apurado. Yeah. Welcome yeah. to Godilandia. <laughs> ah, sí. Mira. Godín. 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 No Godín. Yeah. Godín is running. <laughs> en esa bolsa hay, hay un topper. Te lo juro. Oh, wow, cool. Similar to the lords and ladies, Godinas have been immortalized through hundreds of thousands of memes circulating on the internet. Memes like Godina's Meditation, Godina's Kitchen, Godina's Transformer, Mal de Puerco. Do you think it's strange that, like, this is the most normal thing to do in the world? and it's become like a total sensation here in Mexico. Acepto el humor y acepto que es una forma de vida que me ha dado la oportunidad de mantener mi casa, de viajar, de comprar mi auto, mm -hmm. de darle regalos a mi mamá en el cumpleaños, de... pero no es normal porque te burlas de las personas y burlarte de no es válido burlarte de nadie porque cuando y eres la, la dignidad de, de cualquier persona, entonces ya no está bien. The camaraderie of these groups is undeniably fierce, but so far it seems like they are all in opposition to one another. The lords and the ladies ridicule the godinas, the punks beat the emos, and everyone steers clear of the cholos. But there are some things that unite them. Oh, wow, she looks so beautiful. We're at Sonora Market, where you can buy costumes, medicinal herbs, live animals, and voodoo dolls all in one place. I'm meeting up with Barbara Sanchez Kane, a Mexican-born designer whose show I'll be attending at the Fashion Week tomorrow. Mexico City traffic. Barbara mixes strong political commentary with Mexican iconography drawing from her religious upbringing. Having spent the last few years abroad, Barbara's back to show her work for the very first time in Mexico City. I didn't know what, I was looking for little dolls, but not yeah. these ones, because I do want to use them for my next collection. But this is super entrenched in the culture, this kind of like superstition. We are very, very, very superstitious. This is scapularios. So How do you wear something like this? I put it all on the neck, but like uh -huh. my mom put yeah. it in the bra, like inside. What? So a lot of your collections have sort of religious influences. Mexico in general is very Catholic. Yeah. Uh, I use a lot of religion. Catholic was I was grow up as a Catholic. Yeah. So like the Virgin Mary, you see it everywhere. You see it like in the bumper of a car. You see it yeah. in the church yeah. everywhere. Mexico has the second largest Catholic population in the world. But what is unique about Mexico is its mixing of traditional Catholicism and ancient indigenous beliefs. One of the clearest examples is saint worship. What's it with all of these saints, though? Like, this one is the one that I The Guadalupe. The Guadalupe. Everybody has their own saint? It depends on the situation, yeah. you know? Like, let's say me, when I was 22, I had ovarian cancer. When I got sick, my mom, she said that I got better because of her. Really? So, What's the story of that saint? I think the saint at 16, 17, uh -huh. they tried to kill her, and then she survived. This is like, this girl is a survivor. survivor. And my mom goes every Tuesday to church, like, you know, pray. And this and, is her, yeah. this is the one she prays to. And so everybody sort of picks a saint. Yeah. Or sometimes he says the saint picks you. Although many of the saints are recognized by the Catholic Church, there are some that are worshiped in the shadows. This is oh, Santa Muerte. Santa Muerte. Yeah. I Can want I to get one of this and one of this. Santa Muerte? Yeah. The Santa Muerte, otherwise known as the Holy Death. The Santa Muerte typically attracts outcasts, the poor and the working class, those outside of the law, and those who don't fit into the norms of society. In fact, her idolization has created a sort of community of its own. I'm here to meet Doña Keita, who's the woman who cares for the Santa Muerte. Hola, Doña. Hola. ¿Qué tal? Mm. Hola. Mucho gusto. El gusto es mío. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Ah, pues para mí es un honor que tú hayas venido al altar. ¿Quieres pasar a verlo? Sí. Ah, 
The Santa Muerte is highly condemned by the Catholic Church, which forced most in the past to worship her in private. That was until 2001, when Doña Cata set up a shrine outside of her home. People have been coming here ever since. Oh, wow. She looks so beautiful. Yo soy devota de la Santa Muerte hace 57 años. Wow. And what sort of people have a relationship with Santa Muerte? De todo tipo. Estamos muy necesitados de, de tener fe en algo. No tiene trabajo, no tiene para su renta, no tiene para comer. What does worshiping Santa Muerte mean? Mucha tranquilidad, un rayito de luz, estabilidad, fe. Para mí es mi madre, es mi guía espiritual y es en quien puedo confiar y sé que siempre ella estará ahí para ayudarme. Así sea el peor problema del mundo, ahí estará ahí. Are you coming here to offer something? Sí, vengo a entregar una veladora en el nombre de mis compañeras que han muerto en el transcurso del mes. Así que es una forma como de pedir que ella las lleve junto a Dios y que tengan un buen descanso. Para pedir que ya paren las muertes, que ella interceda por nosotros. Monse is a sex worker who is taking me to a safe house where she will be getting ready for work this evening. Prostitution is decriminalized in Mexico, but unfortunately, this acceptance by the government does not protect them from the impending dangers of working on the streets. Are these your dogs or no? Esos perros tenemos en el techo para que nos avisen porque como ladran demasiado si hay ven una persona ajena a la casa, inmediatamente empezarían a ladrar y eso nos alertaría que hay un intruso. Can you tell me what happened to your friend recently? Y uh, ultim, eh, bueno, el último homicidio hacia las mujeres trans fue, bueno, la primera compañera llegó un cliente eh, ofreciendo 200 pesos que a unos 15, 20 metros el cliente detonó una pistola en el cerebro, bueno, en la sien y otro en el pecho. Parte por el asesinato de mi compañera lo dejaron libre por faltas de prueba. Las pruebas estaban ahí. La chica estaba en la unidad. La unidad tenía perforaciones de bala. La pistola estaba ahí porque dicen que no, que no, no hay nada, que, que, lo, que lo condene. Bueno, cuando íbamos a enterrarlo, pues las compañeras dijeron, no, basta, estamos harta de que las autoridades no nos tomen en cuenta. Entonces decidimos tomar el cuerpo de nuestra compañera, nos pusimos en medio de insurgentes a exigir que el gobierno tomara carta del asunto porque la verdad, y dijimos, ni una más. ¡Justicia! 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 Oh my God, you look amazing. Gracias. What are these things? Llevamos el desodorante por cualquier cosa aparte para esto. Uh -huh. <laughs> Al cliente. Llevamos el perfume, ya no tanto por oler rico, sino por cualquier cosa. Okay. En defensa, personas, ya que no podemos usar armas porque inmediatamente nos acusarían de robo. Yeah. Entonces tenemos que buscar una forma para defendernos o ya de perdida uh -huh. que haga peso en el bolso al momento de darle. Okay. Okay. Ya ahora ya no hay quién ni si no nos llevamos. Eso se ha acabado. Ahora somos una sola persona. ¿Por qué? Porque todas estamos a expensas de que el asesino venga y nos robe nuestras vidas. Y ese es el miedo de nosotras, las trabajadoras sexuales ahora. ¿Por qué? Porque antes de salir de casa tenemos que encomendarnos para poder trabajar y pedir regresar a casa con bien porque nuestras familias nos esperan. I keep having to, you know, say her words over in my mind to like actually think about how dark the situation is and how scary their lives are right now. I'm not sure I would be able to work again after my friends were killed. That's when you really understand the Santa Muerte. Your government's not recognizing your rights. The police aren't even arresting the guys that are killing your friends. It makes sense that that's the person they're asking to protect them. I'm back at Fashion Week, which for the last 10 years has been showing the work of Mexico's most prominent fashion designers. However, this year, they're devoting a night to emerging designers, like Barbara Sanchez Kane. So this is the kitchen. This is where Sanchez Kane is having her show. It looks like they're in the middle of rehearsal right now. It's cool in here. But you found the coolest part of the Sheridan. <laughs> 
So it's the first time actually they're showing different like styles, like more crazy, more like avant-garde, yeah. It's definitely not glamorous, like the Benito Santo show, but the energy definitely feels better. There's a lot more creative negotiations happening in here that interests me. What's in here? Do you know? No idea. Okay. Like, it was a stocking costume, so. Like, oh, yeah. Wait, what? Okay, so where did... It's <laughs> my no wall. No wall. But, and he's missing an L. This is in response to Trump. Obviously. And what's the name of this collection? Citizen. For me, I do this because for me, it's a way of like getting my stuff out. Out, yeah. You know, telling a story about what's going on politically is an exercise, literally. Yeah. For me, it's like I put everything there. Like, I think a lot of Mexican designers, like, I don't know, I don't want to say everybody, but instead of taking inspiration from Mexico, they see other designers in Europe and they're like, oh, they're doing this, so let's. Right. But at the end, you have so much in your own country, like in Mexico in general, and nobody uses it. There. We're still dealing with this L, and we have to stuff these like pillow hats that the girls wear, which are really cool. <laughs> what? <laughs> but I'm excited. Carolina, I hear you're the master steamer. Sí, 40 años. Oh my God. Sí. Do you like these clothes? Sí, claro. Cada ropa es diferente. Hi, I'm Haley. I'm gonna put this butt on you, okay? Time. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, oh my god, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <coughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. Let's just get close. I had a, more of a sense of Mexican heritage. And I think it's just exciting to be around someone who has a really strong message. It finally made me feel like I was in Mexico seeing Mexican work. I started here at Benito Santos' fashion show, and what I didn't realize at the moment is being in the same room as the president's daughter and, and then riding on the back of a bike in Neza with the cholos is not a jump people are necessarily able to do here. And because the impunity starts at the top, your sense of justice is only based on the race and class that you're born into. And because of that, people are drawn to creating communities in order to protect each other because they can't count on the police, they can't count on the government. So they need to have this kind of strong identity and strong community in order to survive. And so their clothing in a way just becomes a symbol of their belonging to the group. And you realize how fierce their sense of protecting one another is. Each one of them said to me that they consider this their family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 